Hello, Craig Deleuze here from the Cal FFL Newsroom with what I'm sure you'll find to be an informative, if not entertaining, update on Assembly Bill 1609. But before we get started, let's give Assemblyman Alejo a quick opportunity to tell us exactly what his bill does. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Chairman and members. Um, I'm here to present AB 1609, which is a common sense bill that will keep firearms off the streets by making it a state law violation for a resident of California to go out of state purchase a firearm, and then bring that firearm into the state without going through a licensed dealer. Okay, hold up. Is it really common sense to write a bill to make something illegal that's already against the law? Current California law gives the Department of Justice police powers. It gives them the ability to enforce California law by arresting folks. Further, California law makes it illegal if any member of this committee wanted to go to Nevada and buy a firearm and bring it into California, they must go through, they must have the, the firearm transferred, shipped to a California dealer with a California FFL. It must then go through the DRO system, the fees being paid, 10 day waiting period, et cetera, et cetera. Assemblyman Aleo in his statement rightfully noticed that the Department of Justice was given last year $3.5 million to, to, to conduct stings and enforce gun trafficking. First question we have to ask is, how's that going? $3.5 million is a lot of money. They have the powers to enforce gun trafficking. They have the funds to enforce gun trafficking. Why are we needing this bill? You know what? That's a good question. Why don't we ask someone from the California Attorney General's office? If a transfer is done in the state of California right now and there's not a gun store involved, generally that breaks the law. But if that same thing happens in the parking lot in uh, one of the casinos in Reno uh, over there, and that, let's say there's a Californian resident on one half of that transaction, uh, and he brings the gun back here, um, there's no uh, corresponding state crime that I, I know of, uh, nor do anyone in my bureau know of, that we can charge that person with on the state level. Really? You mean to tell me that there's nothing that the California Department of Justice can do in these cases? California Penal Code Section 830 and the ensuing sections underneath that give broad police powers to a wide range of law enforcement agencies within the state of California, Department of Justice being one. So California Code Section 830 already gives them arrest powers. Penal Code Section 27545 specifically says that if you were to buy a firearm out of state and transfer it by FedEx into California, you are committing a crime. And it outlines what that crime may be. Misdemeanor for rifle, up, up to one year in jail, possibly felony if it's, if it's a handgun. So if I may provide that clarification, there, Penal Code Section 27545 provides that this is already illegal by state law. Somebody please get this guy from the AG's office a copy of the Penal Code, a pair of glasses, something, maybe a copy of Hooked on Phonics, I don't know because he clearly needs someone to help him read the law. Fortunately, there were some assembly members present who do know how to read the law. Under the current federal law, 18U.S.C. 922A prohibits an individual with some clearly stated exemptions from transferring firearms between states without using federal licensed dealers. There's a lot of talk about conformities with your bill, uh, Mr. Alejo. Federal law does not allow anyone to purchase or acquire any legal firearm in any state outside of the person's residence with the provision that the person or dealer selling the firearm must comply with all the laws of the purchaser's state. The only way to comply with that is for the seller to send the firearm to a legal dealer in California. This means the seller must become registered with the California Firearms License Check System, obtain a transfer authorization from the California Department of Justice Firearms Bureau, and then and only then can they ship the firearm to an approved legal dealer in California. At the point, the purchaser must comply with all the transfer laws, including background check and a 10-day waiting period. Violation of this procedure would already be a felony under federal law and multiple misdemeanors and possible felonies under state laws. Therefore, it, please, it appears to be completely unnecessary and completely redundant. This bill would say that if you go to another state and legally purchase a firearm and then bring it back to California, then you would be in violation of this law on a state level. Is that correct? 
under state, it, it would be a violation of federal law, but it's conforming federal law to state law. So under this bill, it would be a violation of state law okay. as well. Does it also include if you go to other countries and import weapons? Any any gun purchase that? that any gun purchased out of state, Mr. Only. Okay, so it's it the the whole purpose is out of state. Correct. Um, would it have any effect on, um, like the Olympic team that travels in to the state of California to compete from other states, which seems to be something that might have been referenced by the, the, answer is uh, no. the witness? No, not at all? No. There, is there a, a, an exemption written into it? There's uh, numerous exemptions, and the, the exemptions that exist in federal law, um, some technical amendments could be done to fix that, and I'm open to doing that as the bill proceeds. Did you notice how Assemblyman Alejo first claimed that the exemptions were in the bill? Then he reversed direction and claimed that the bill would be amended to include them. Now somebody please tell me, why should we trust him to make these changes when he failed to do so when they were brought up two weeks earlier in the Assembly Public Safety Committee? I, I have a concern about the exemptions that were communicated by Mr. Doherty. Um, I think those are valid concerns. Um, I appreciate what you're trying to do, and I understand where you're coming from on this issue. I know you're very passionate about this issue, but those exemptions um, should be of great concern to everybody in this panel, regardless of your stance on gun rights um, or ownership. It, it simply gives the tools to state law enforcement officials to enforce the same provisions, the same parallel language that's under federal law, under our state uh, st statutes a 10-day waiting period, a purchasing, uh, um, the purchaser have, having to do a background check, having a, a hand uh, safety certificate, all those are basic minimal requirements that should be done. It doesn't prohibit or uh, anybody from buying those guns. They just have to do it through licensed dealers. And when they buy, if they don't follow that process, now our state Department of Justice is able to enforce it under our state penal codes. So let me get this straight. Assemblyman Aleo says the current law doesn't cover these crimes, even though they clearly do. Then he says that his bill simply conforms state law with current federal law, even though by his own admission, it doesn't. And yet now he's asking his fellow assembly members to trust that he'll make the fixes necessary in order to make AB 1609 a bill supportable by gun rights activists. Really? He must be smoking something. Well, whatever it is, his fellow Democrats must be on it too, as they voted in lockstep for his measure that is clearly not needed and only provides more restrictions for California gun owners. Well, now it's headed for the floor of the California State Assembly, where your assembly member is going to have an opportunity to help kill it. So please, go to demandrights.org, that's demandrights.org, and make sure that your legislators know that they should vote no on AB 1609. And please, support our efforts by becoming a member of CalFFL. Whether you're a commercial CalFFL, a firearms-related business, or an individual collector or shooter, CalFFL is making a difference for you. Please, help us help you. I'm Craig Deleuze here in the CalFFL Newsroom. Thank you for joining us.